55 crazy music facts everyone should know, singer Hank Williams died less than two months after releasing his final single, which was titled, I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive. The Flaming Lips once released a 24-hour long song, which was sold on a hard drive that was encased in a real human skull for $5,000. They sold five of them. David Bowie was so unconvinced of the commercial viability of his album Low, that after its release he decided to tour as Iggy Pop's keyboardist instead of promoting the new record. The Bird's 1965 recording of Turn, Turn, Turn holds the distinction in the US of being the number one hit with the oldest lyrics, because nearly all the lyrics are taken from the Book of Ecclesiastes, which is traditionally ascribed to King Solomon in the 10th century BC. Waylon Jennings chained smoked six packs of cigarettes a day. The shoot line repeated throughout Come Together by the Beatles is actually John Lennon saying, shoot me, but McCartney's bass hits on the me, so only shoot is easily audible on the finished recording. Pulp frontman Jarvis Cocker invaded the stage at the 1996 Brit Awards to protest Michael Jackson's performance, in which he sang surrounded by children and a rabbi. Cocker proceeded to slap Jackson's bum and run around on stage. He was later arrested by police. Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin had an improvised jam session, which was recorded but never released. The Smith song, This Charming Man, has 15 layered guitar tracks, including one that is backwards and one that was created by dropping a knife onto the strings of two guitars laid on top of each other. English rock band Kasabian got their name from the last name of a member of the Manson family. Linda Kasabian. Sid Barrett of Pink Floyd, in an act of mad genius, once pranked the band by writing a seemingly simple song that the band could never learn. Each time they rehearsed it, he would arbitrarily change the chords, then sing it back to them to correct them. It was called, Have You Got It Yet? Keyboardist Alan Price receives all royalties for the animals The House of the Rising Sun, as there wasn't room for all five band members' names on the record label, and Alan was first alphabetically. When Chaz Chandler proposed that they all split the royalties equally, Price told him to go f*** himself. The lyrics, Let me stand next to your fire from the song Fire, came from when Jimi Hendrix was at Noel Redding's mother's house. Jimmy asked Noel's mother if he could stand next to her fire to warm up. The family dog was laying by the fire, which also inspired the line, move over Rover and let Jimmy take over. Robert Fripp, the guitarist for King Crimson, and for a short while David Bowie and one of the greatest guitarists of all time, was tone deaf. John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin arranged the strings on R.E.M.'s song, Everybody Hurts, and the Rolling Stones, She's a Rainbow. Willie Nelson has played the same guitar, Trigger, for 50 years. It has been signed by friends, family, lawyers, and Johnny Cash. It was his last remaining possession twice. Willie has played it at over 10,000 shows, and he gets it repaired every year at the same shop in Austin, Texas. As a child, Jimi Hendrix carried an actual broom with him everywhere around school for over a year as a pretend guitar. The school's social worker tried to get funding for a real guitar, insisting that leaving him without one might result in psychological damage. Jimi Hendrix gave Frank Zappa a Stratocaster in the 1960s. Frank played it for many years, and it was played by Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, and other guitar greats. Frank's son, Dweezil, still plays the same guitar in concerts to this date. Fender Guitars did a study and found that 90% of new guitar players abandon playing within one year. The 10% that don't quit spend an average of $10,000 on hardware over their lifetime, buying five to seven guitars and multiple amps. The world's largest Michael Jackson memorabilia collection is in Equatorial Guinea, bought by the reigning dictator's son with stolen government funds. In 1992, the lead vocalist of L7, Donita Sparks, removed her tampon on stage and threw it into the crowd yelling, eat my used tampon fuckers. The tampon is now referred to as one of the most unsanitary pieces of rock memorabilia in history. When Willie Nelson's assets were auctioned by the IRS, fans bought the items and gave them back to Willie. Kurt Cobain's guitar, a 1959 Martin acoustic used during the MTV Unplugged performance, sold at auction in 2020 for $6 million, making it not only the most valuable guitar, but also the most valuable piece of rock music memorabilia of all time. The video game Rock Band The Beatles was produced under the code name Rock Band Nickelback in order to keep the game's development a secret and deflect curiosity about it. 
There is a genre of music called cattlecore, invented by Hank Williams III, that consists of cattle auctioneers set to metal riffs. In the beginning of his career, Eddie Van Halen would play shows with his back to the audience to keep anyone from stealing his technique. His technique was so explosive that his guitar solo on Michael Jackson's Beat It caused a speaker to catch on fire during its recording. In 1981, Ozzy Osbourne attended a meeting with CBS in Germany. Intoxicated, he decided to lighten the mood by performing a striptease on the table and then kissing the record executive on the lips. According to his wife Sharon, he actually performed a goose step up and down the table and then proceeded to dip his testicles in and then urinate in the executive's wine. Eh? While working on Iron Maiden's the number of the Beast album, music producer Martin Birch was involved in a car accident with a minibus carrying nuns and was left with a repair bill of 666 pounds. Queen guitarist Brian May's iconic red special guitar was hand-built by his father using an old oak table, a hundred-year-old fireplace mantle, a bicycle saddlebag holder, his mother's knitting needles, and a button from her sewing box. In 1968, after Johnny Cash's guitar player passed away, Cash found himself at a show where the temporary replacement, Carl Perkins, couldn't make it. An audience member asked Cash if he could fill in for the night, and he said yes. Bob Wooten then became Cash's guitar player for the next 29 years. American blues musician Robert Johnson was said to have sold his soul to the devil. The story is that he went to the crossroads near a plantation at midnight and met the devil, who took his guitar, tuned it, played a few songs, and handed the guitar back, granting him mastery of the instrument in return for his soul. Eddie Van Halen's famous red, white, black guitar is called the Frankenstrat because Van Halen replaced the bridge, neck, pickups, controls, and gave it a custom paint job. It was an attempt to combine the sound of a classic Gibson guitar with the physical attributes of a Fender. Before overdrive guitar pedals were invented, rock pioneer Link Ray would intentionally stab the speaker cone of his guitar amps with a pencil to achieve a distorted sound. This resulting effect can be heard on his 1958 song Rumble. In 2010, a man from Arizona sold an air guitar on eBay for $5.50 and claimed it was used once at a Bon Jovi concert. In February 1964, Rickenbacker created a 12-string electric guitar and took the prototype to NYC to give to John Lennon. Lennon gave it to George Harrison, who used it for their film A Hard Day's Night. Roger McGuinn from The Birds, who'd studied the instruments in the movie, immediately ordered one and thus created his signature sound. The song, Transdermal Celebration by Ween, has a guitar solo that was played with Carlos Santana's guitar without him knowing it. Ween sneaked into the storage where Santana's tools were, recorded the solo in one take, and left the place. Mark Knopfler agreed to allow Weird Al to parody Money for Nothing on the condition that Knopfler play the lead guitar on the track to add authenticity. In Radiohead's song, Creep, you can hear three blasts of dead notes when the song shifts from the verse to the chorus. This was done by guitarist Johnny Greenwood, who was intentionally trying to sabotage the song because he did not like how quiet it was 